<clears throat> All right, this is uh, deception video number 1A. Um, this is a seven part series, seven jaw dropping, diabolical, epic achievements in brainwashing. And the purpose of this seven part video series is to bring all humanity into obedience to the Creator who has revealed himself and proven himself to be true and sovereign uh, by the fulfillment of prophecy. And, <clears throat> and some of that fulfillment is, uh, for instance, the curse of the moneylenders from Deuteronomy 28.43 and Deuteronomy 28.68, which was written uh, 3,500 years ago, basically explaining that if we don't obey the Creator's laws, that we would be uh, enslaved uh, by moneylenders. Sorry, my chips bag exploded. <laughs> when, you, when you do construction, you eat on the road an awful lot, and uh, that's what's going on. So anyway, uh, regular guy, except uh, for whatever uh, reasons Yah has chosen me to be one of his prophets to basically show I can take a, a, a complete dirt bag and, and transform him to being one of my representatives because he knows that Yahweh knows that I will obey and uh, follow him to the ends of the earth and then I will also be willing to be martyred for him and uh, train my son to do the very exact same thing because that's how tribes maintain their integrity, their spiritual integrity, uh, and love of themselves, and and uh, to promote intergenerational nobility, kind of like the American Indians, living self-sufficient on the land. So part of the restoration of the Bible it's called the restitution of all things. All First Nation people uh, are restored to the lands of their fathers. And uh, that's part of the Jubilee good news. So anyway, in this seven part series, we can explain, I'm, I'm, I'm proving how we can accomplish all of this in seven parts. But in order to do that, I, I got to uh, get rid of the deception and the idolatry because otherwise you won't understand how the good news uh, of the Bible, meaning the Jubilee, good news from Luke 4, 18, 19, uh, heals everything. It's a Jubilee Sabbath and it heals everything and we can do it in less than a year with a tiny, tiny minority. All right, this is an action plan for uh, um, a focused activity for tribal leadership for overcomers to reestablish a uh, benevolent society on earth and overcome uh, the Babylonian captivity. So, again, punked. We don't want to be punked. Well, you don't want to be punked, right? Nobody wants to be played a fool. The sad thing is that often, you know, if there's a woman that's cheating on a man and you're the buddy and you want to tell the guy, the guy, a lot of times, he don't want to hear it at all. And he'll actually kill the messenger rather than wanting to hear painful truths. And that's where we are. You got to humble yourself, and and uh, this is going to be painful stuff. Uh, but it's this. It's getting through this. We have to break our bonds with the satanic system. This dark theocracy called Babylon. Babylon needs confusion. So, in this Babylonian confusion, all of us have picked up all kinds of idolatry. And uh, we, this idolatry becomes uh, a type of Stockholm Syndrome or Battered Wife Syndrome because I'm going to be critical of the Constitution, for instance, or critical of the Rothschild State of Israel, or critical of the Bible being exactly right, that nobody messed up a word. <laughs> Some people actually believe that. That is a belief system of the Baptist Church that the Bible is the inerrant Word of God, when in fact, uh, Jeremiah 8.8 8 says that, uh, how can you know what it is, the law is, when because of the lying hand of uh, the, the lying pen of the scribes. 
you know, talking about how the scribes corrupted the word. So the word is inerrant. Yahweh speaking is, that's not a mistake. But what is a mistake is the scribes, the, the people, the human beings that use it to manipulate uh, and control people and make a counterfeit. So uh, the first video is uh, the U.S. Constitution. And I had a bit of a hiccup in the first recording because the, the screen got too hot and it ceased working. So I gotta be conscious of that. It might get too hot. Maybe I'll hold this down this way. Okay, so uh, the US Constitution. Uh, in our society, everybody thinks that's noble. The police and military and the enforcers of the law, and the law being the US Constitution, are they really servants of the people? It's like a yes and no answer, kind of, because the people isn't a good thing. What we're commanded to be in the Bible is to be our, under our tribal God of the burning bush. Uh, he wants us to be obedient to the Holy Spirit, right? And under that system, only God can create any law because he created everything. He's the pot. He's the potter. He chooses. He writes. He creates. He makes the laws. He proclaims the end from the beginning. But under the constitutional system, we the people make the laws. Or we hire representatives and we know how that's all working out. It's been corrupted an awful lot. And uh, now we keep voting and it seems to get worse and worse and worse. And uh, that's the paradigm we live under. So there is no voting in the Bible, alternatively. And you're going to find a lot of uh, contradictions between the biblical law, because the, the Constitution says we the people are the uh, you know, return power to the people, that all uh, power derives from the consent of the governed. Right? It's flowery, flowery, <laughs> secular humanism and enlightenment uh, thinking. And what it results in is in a situation like Rome, where basically you can, you know, you can say anybody you want is your God. You can say that Apollo is your God. You can say that Zeus is your God, or both Apollo and Zeus or any combination of thereof, or you can say you're a Christian. Um, you can obey the feasts of the Lord. You can obey Christmas and Easter. Whatever you want to obey, that is just fine. Say whoever it is. We don't care. But pay and fear Caesar. <laughs> fear Caesar, and because you're afraid of him and he becomes your true God, then you're going to tithe to him. And that is basically the uh, the methodology where in which uh, man's law has achieved the pedestal of power on earth. And the way we got to tear it down is say, uh, you know, if all of us where we outnumber uh, the bad guys a billion to one, if we decide that's no longer valid, then all of the power which is enabling this wicked system, it uh, evaporates. And basically, this is part of the great shaking, biblically speaking. This is a prophetic period where we're going to shake all of these things down that we thought were true. Like, can man make laws? Like, uh, who is Esau today? Who is Jacob today? Who are the Israelites are we allowed to tri charge any interest? So we're going to tackle all these things in this video series because the purpose of it is, is to come out with the good news that you'll have an understanding that how within seven months, because of our numerical superiority in ideas, is we can have a, a real life Go uh, David versus Goliath moment where uh, it's true that the pen is mightier than the sword, meaning ideas can overcome all of these um, vestiges of physical power. 
that the spiritual power is going to overcome the physical power. That's what happened with David versus Goliath. It wasn't due to the physical power, because if a, that conflict was based upon the physical power, David would have lost. But since that uh, conflict was based upon spiritual power, and Yahweh went right for the temple, right? This is where ideas start. You know, you're thinking about doing something. And if you base everything off of man's law, the morality of man, you end up into a ditch. But if you base your decisions upon the wisdom of the word of Yahweh and his anointed servants, then we co-create, well, Yahweh creates it, it's already created, but uh, we dissolve our allegiance to Babylonian systems. And it's through that dissolution that we regain ourselves. Because with idolatry, you give your own self-value to these external things. Well, Yahweh wants to fill us up. Yahweh's here right now, and he, he wants us to get rid of our idolatry and be filled up with his wisdom, his Holy Spirit, his understanding, so that we have the courage and focus and wisdom, uh, exhortations, you know, encouragement to go down uh, through this path, through this great conflict, because quite literally, we are going to be standing up to the greatest spiritual, uh, military, and economic power that's ever been, which is, you know, the New World Order or Mystery Babylon. And uh, in the same way that our forefathers, uh, the colonists, uh, stood down Great Britain, who at that time was the greatest power on earth, and then going back 3,500 years to the ancient Israelites, we're going to be standing them down. That is the blood that flows in our veins, and we positively can beat these guys, but we have to stop shooting ourselves in the foot, and the way that we shoot ourselves in the foot is by believing lies, believing in idolatry. So the U.S. Constitution is our national idol. And when we see, you know, Marines and Army and these uh, military guys and the police all taking their oath to the Constitution, we all think it's good and they're actually making a deal with the devil. <laughs> I know that it's tough to, to hack this stuff. It's not going to be easy. But again, at the end of this whole thing, we're going to come out with the realization that through Yahweh's laws, the very narrow path, we want to bring his people away from Judas goats, get them onto the narrow path for an exodus, which can happen in less than, in less than a year. People go, oh, that's that's not possible. Well, he, you know, here's a good way to think about it: is imagine all of us just started. You know, think of the American Indians; they just bartered, right? They had a money system called wampum, and at the time, Great Britain was doing its thing. Uh, so, figure it's like 1815 or whatever, you know, or 1812, and the British sent. Uh, troops with the War of 1812 uh, back into uh, the New World and to uh, attack the United States, right? Andrew Jackson at the Battle of New Orleans and all that kind of stuff. Well, the point is, um, at that time, they were the super world empire of that time. And the colonies uh, said no. We're not going to be your slaves. Well, that's what must happen again. There's a generation of fathers who say, no, we are not going to be your slaves. We're not going to consent. We're willing to be martyred. And uh, we're just not going to lay down anymore. 
we're not going to, uh, we're going to solve this problem before our generation dies so that our children can live free. That's the level of commitment necessary. And the problem is, is when we do what we need to do, establishing a separate biblical government, kind of like the Amish or the American Indian, the, uh, the dominant establishment is going to declare us, who are peaceful, we don't have uh, violent intentions, they're going to uh, say that we are financial terrorists, or they're going to say that we're uh, drug dealers, right? Or traffic, they traffic in cannabis or something. You know what I mean? They'll just talk about whatever. When all our, our entire point of all of our teachings is simply to have a, a jubilee where the land is repatriated, that Yahweh's law is reestablished, and all we want to do is promote the idea of removing our consent to feeding the very beast which is enslaving us. So we don't have to be violent. You know, I'm a dog, I don't have to, you know, I don't have to be afraid of my fleas. I don't have to worship my fleas, I just recognize my fleas for what they are. They're just a painful parasite. That's all they are. And I'll be more healthy once I get rid of the parasite. So Jubilee is the good news of the Bible. And it's part of, part of God's laws because under God's laws, all debt is forgiven every seven years. So if we were growing up, for, in, for instance, uh, rather than worrying about getting costumes and the NFL and all of the, the fall classic for baseball, the World Series, those are the things that in Babylon we've been brainwashed to think about. Oh, you go back to school in the fall. Uh, those are all part of the dominant culture of what the fall should be. Well, under the biblical culture, every seven years at the Feast of Tents, you go camping for a week and you have uh, you have uh, all debts are forgiven. So, I mean, how awesome would that be? <laughs> I know I work all the time and I'm always in debt somehow or other. And I have periods in my life where I get uh, completely out, but it's it's very easy to fall right back in it because if you are motivated by the Holy Spirit, you want to be an activist and uh, you know spend your time promoting His kingdom and solutions and the release from captivity. So uh, activism kind of just gobbles up all your money. So, testing the U.S. Constitution, it's uh, obviously not in the Bible. There, there's contrast between the Bible and uh, the U.S. Constitution. Namely, um, the Bible says, in the beginning there was Yah. Whereas the Constitution says, we the people are all the, 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 the source of morality. The Bible establishes a theocracy, the Constitution establishes polytheism, and the net result of polytheism always results in a, the curse of the moneylenders, and it results in a captivity. So it's rebellion in the garden. So the idea of, you know, who can make laws is a paramount to understand. Because if all of us believe like the birds and the bees and the wild animals that we don't have to pay, then we don't have to pay. We outnumber the bad guys a billion to one. It's just a matter of getting past our idolatry. So there's corruptions that we've been taught to believe in, such as theocracy or polytheism, who can make laws, who should we be obedient to? Be obedient to the U.S. Constitution, or or be obedient to the uh, the Bible. And the Constitution doesn't have any debt forgiveness every seven years, but the Bible does. 
the Bible has debt forgiveness as law every seven years in the fall at the Feast of Tents. And we're inviting everybody who uh, is listening to come to our event at the, the Feast of Tents in Breckenridge, Colorado, October uh, 6th, 8th, and 9th. Uh, wait, 6th, might be 6th, 7th, and 8th. I think those are the dates. I'm, I'm not sure. It's right in there. I made a meme on Facebook. So whoever can make laws up, like the U.S. Constitution, will follow that up with its ability to tithe to it. So the, the ability for this uh, secular and satanic state to be authorized to make any law comes from the Constitution itself. So how do we get out of that? How do we get out of this? The way we get out of it is we remove our bonds to this international system of constitution and replace it with uh, the belief in the biblical government of tens, fifties, hundreds, and a thousands. And that all of us can issue money uh, to be priests, kings, and a royal priesthood. And the way we issue money is through a biblical tithe and uh, it's recorded in Deuteronomy 14.25 uh, about tithing at a distance. All we got to do is bring our, you know, 10% of our, our increase and we bring that to this big uh, potluck that, that's held, um, connecting us back with the land. Like this is a very sound doctrine of for self-sufficiency and morality and uh, a people who want not to be the tail of the snake, but they want to be the head of the snake. Uh, uh, understanding that's the way that uh, is required in order to, 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 to be responsible and moral and raise another generation which uh, is proud to follow in our footsteps because we did the right thing. We overcame the captivity we, uh, at a time of uh, war and a poverty of hope, and there's a poverty of money and a poverty of solutions, we come in with a solution that in less than a year, we can overcome all of it, and the plan is non-violent, and it is an alignment completely with biblical law. So, uh, that's... It's, it's amazing, you know, I'm talking about this episode of Punk, that God's delusion has so deluded the, uh, even the elect, even Christians and Hebrew roots and Jews, that they've become an expert in memorizing all of the virtues of the Bible, but for whatever reason can't see that they have been deceived into obeying Caesar rather than the biblical creator. So that is a grand deception, and we don't want people to be punked. So uh, that was the point of episode one. Episode number two is uh, basically how this deception that most people, Christians included and atheists, they'll, like Christians will say, well, nothing's going to get better until uh, Jesus comes back. And I'm here to tell you that is not scriptural. What is scriptural is that the people repent first. The people must repent and humble themselves because it's only through repentance that God will be willing to uh, remarry his bride. And currently his bride is whoring and refusing, absolutely refusing to obey him because the bride has been deceived into believing that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. And that deception affects atheists, that deception affects agnostics, the deception that man's law is the supreme law of the land is a deception that deceives uh, Christians of all denominations, Christians in their house churches and uh, Christians in the Hebrew Roots movement. 
right? I see uh, John Hall is on. Thanks for uh, uh, listening at the School of the Prophets. This is a broad teaching, bringing everybody into the truth if they're willing to go on an exodus so that we can have uh, release from captivity in less than a year. Exodus is fast, baby. It happens fast. Less than a year. But it's essential. In order to get into the promised land, you can't be worried about there being giants in the land. Else you'll be listening to those who are giving the evil report. Jesus whipped the money lenders. We need to focus on the money lenders. So, <clears throat> that's basically it for episode one. Like, it's that's no small challenge. What I'm talking about with respect to getting over the idolatry of voting and the anthems and the, the pledge to the flag and uh, all of that kind of stuff. But once you understand what all of what's really going on there is that that is uh, idolatry and whoring with other gods, that it's actually um, a ball worship. And when it says ball worship, you think that you're going to be worship on, on some kind of goat or something or other, like some. But what it really is is the belief that man can make laws. To be a constitutionalist is to be a ball worshiper, because these guys with special, uh, you know, costumes and special uh, language, these lawyers these scribes, these Pharisees and experts in the law, that they're able to make up their own law and actually play God. And then we've been deceived by them that we believe it's true by our, by our activities because we tithe to this God that they created. We, uh, we render, we lay down our lives, we sacrifice for it, and it's just mass delusion kind of just like uh, that episode of uh, uh, Candid Camera. It's the, uh, I call it the conformity camera. In the 50s, there's a show called Candid Camera, and it shows, you know, they have a mark. There's a person that they want to dupe in an episode of Punked. And um, so let's say you have five people walk into an eleva elevator and they all face the back of the elevator. And there's one person who's the mark. They're in the elevator and they just walk into the elevator and they turn around and normally the buttons are on the same wall as where the door is. That's normally what you see. But imagine uh, uh, you know, five or six people following that person and they all faced the back door. <laughs> so because people don't you know, they, you know, imagine I'm, um, I did that and I'm facing all of the buttons, but everybody coming in the elevator, they turn, I'd be like, well, you know, maybe the door opens up on the other side and I just be start questioning myself and uh, they show uh, evidence of this mass delusion where typically most people will cave and they'll turn in the direction and face the same direction as the majority of the people. And the Bible says repeatedly, you know, the broad way, the broad way, doing what most of the crowd is doing is typically the wrong way. <laughs> what most of the people are doing is usually the wrong way. And the biblical example for that is when the, the people were allowed to pick between uh, uh, Jesus and Yahshua, the anointed Christ, or a thief, they said, give us Barabbas, right? They could only, only one could be saved, and they chose to pick a thief over the one that whipped the den of thieves, right? It's a stark opposite contrast. It's rather than, uh, you know, going after the thieves, rather than going after the money lenders like the prince did, like the king did, uh, they choose to uh, betray the anointed, 
they choose to b betray the uh, prophets. And that's what happens is the messenger gets killed. People saying, you know, I don't like that, you know? What, what do you mean the U.S. Constitution's an idol, right? That's what people will say, of course. But the oh, that means everybody in the Marine Corps is fighting for the devil. And I go, yeah, exactly right. That's why there's 22 veterans per day. Effectively, one veteran per hour is killing themselves, which is a higher rate of death than actually happens to the troops uh, in the field. So there's more of them offing themselves and killing themselves than is actually dying in combat. That's because they are subject to this episode of Punked. It's the Truman Show going on right now. And one of the prime pillars of the deception, of the Truman Show deception of Punked, this intergenerational episode of Punked, which is going on right now, is the U.S. Constitution. And uh, all it is is the vanity of men thinking that men thinking that man can make laws. And as long as we think that, we are going to be in conflict with our Creator who requires obedience to His theocracy. And you will hear that next to nowhere. And we're starting off with it. And by the way, <laughs> we get deeper and deeper into the meat of things because we have an outcome and the outcome of all of this is we dissolve all the idolatry to get you into a place like oh man you imagine Geronimo somehow was uh, time warped into this culture he like he like imagine him going to get a job when his whole life he was believe, uh, raised to believe my job is to you know uh, provide for my family and uh, you know protect the tribe from outside uh, invaders and and um, be willing to lay my life down for immediate and urgent threats the problem with us is so he's got that wild spirit like a like he's very uh, He has not been domesticated, a sitting bull or a, a, a Geronimo. Never, was never, refused to be domesticated. Refused to, you know, if, if think of a horse that was being broken and put, put, having a bit put in its mouth. And he's like, no, 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 I, no. Just fighting it the whole time, willing to break its own bones, refusing to submit. Well, that's what the, the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit will not surrender to the will of man's law. That's why after Pentecost in the New Testament, that the apostles from that point on, they believed in the kingdom on earth. They believed that uh, Yahweh's authority uh, governed their lives right then and when they picked a leader they didn't vote for a leader they drew straws when they uh, planned to uh, provide for um, widows they understood that it was their responsibility and not to pay a tax to some outside uh, occupier in hopes that the outside international occupier would uh, then take care of their own people. So this is a system which is neither capitalism nor is it socialism. Socialism requiring upon uh, theft uh, and man's law stealing from people in the form of taxes and usury. Well, under the biblical motto, motto uh, the tithe is voluntary because you're in the kingdom. Why would you not want to tithe to a God who has forgiven all of your debts, who has whipped the money lenders, 
who has died on a cross for your sins, our sins, uh, when we were still sin sinners and we still are sinners right now. And all he's asking is like, man, I want to be with my bride. <laughs> I want to be with my bride. I died for my bride and I just want her to obey me. Meanwhile, the bride's just like hoeing around, <laughs> absolutely refusing to stop, refusing to stop rendering to Caesar and Pharaoh. Um, and that, that's what's necessary in order for us to have an exodus uh, remarriage at Pentecost. Uh, the Exodus Israelites did not repeat the Exodus Israelites did not use Pharaoh's money pay Pharaoh's debts uh, govern themselves based upon Pharaoh's morality um, and and have Stockholm syndrome so much as to think that Pharaoh's uh, enforcers were working for you know, to serve and protect them, rather they're there to oppress them, the very opposite. Think of the, the people that we think are the most noble and altruistic people, like the police and the military, the first responders. <clears throat> they are, un under the biblical um, uh, worldview, they are actually the uh, stormtroopers. They're the ones putting down the rebellion to uh, Babylon. So they impose Babylon, and if you try to resist it, they will attack you vigorously. And because they have unlimited funds and people have been so castrated and domesticated, you rarely see anybody challenging them. Uh, ooh, ooh, but we are. Uh, Brent Vanderwall will. Um, we positively will. But we are not here to just fear monger and go, oh, you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, Babylon is creating technology where they can uh, use uh, implantable brainwashing techniques and they can use nanotechnology and impregnate it into mosquitoes. <laughs> now, I'm not disputing that Babylon doesn't do this stuff, but the bottom line is, is that when we serve Yahweh, when we fear Yahweh and we keep his commandments, uh, it doesn't matter what Babylon does. But if we lose our focus and we get distracted because we get freaked out about the nanotechnology and we're worried about what Babylon's going to do, then we're no longer uh, uh, keeping the initiative. What's essential for us to do is to keep the initiative and basically the way we keep the initiative is by observing fully, fully observing the feasts of Yahweh. Because each one of the feasts of Yahweh has an aspect of Yahweh's morality and economic system uh, buried within it. You know, just as a, an, a, an example, the Feast of Tents every seven years is when all debts are forgiven. It's at the Feast of Tents. So it's only been, you know, think of another generation. Imagine all of the people of the earth, right? Like right now it's uh, approaching the end of July. So right now we believe the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. So it, it doesn't talk about debt forgiveness at all. Alternatively, the Bible says debt forgiveness every seven years at the Feast of Tents. And we're having an event at the, for the Feast of Tents in Breckenridge, Colorado, where we are going to teach biblical debt forgiveness. And actually, this is how you do it. This is more or less how you do it. You just obey these songs. Starting off with money versus energy. What's money and what's energy? Listen to the song by the Wandering Monks. And <clears throat> all we have to do is learn a new song. And the new song is basically uh, a pathway. It's a, uh, a paradigm shift in consciousness where previously 
we had a belief system and a worldview that was like this, that man makes laws, the constitution's holy, the police and military are noble, and they are, uh, um, they took an oath to God, basically, because we've been brainwashed to think that the Constitution came from God when it did not. It, it hates the God of the Bible. The U.S. Constitution hates the God of the Bible. It was designed to put all of our faith into man's law. And by putting all of our faith into man's law, we just get deeper and deeper and deeper into a captivity. It's a simple cause and effect relationship. And the way we get out of that is through the good news, the good news of the Jubilee. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the good news. So that's really it for episode one. I, I, um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them. At the School of the Prophets, we like to do, we want to uh, invite we want to invite top thinkers to uh, debate in that iron sharpens iron. And if, you know, there's some people on earth, like communists or whatever, they think all of the land is owned by governments, right? That it shouldn't be owned privately. And then you have, on the flip side of that, you have capitalists who think that all of the land should be owned by uh, private individuals and corporations, right? So, on the two sides of that, whether you're a, a communist thinking uh, that a man-made uh, government should own all the land, or if you're an anarchist thinking that uh, all of the land should be privatized and owned by individuals. In either one of those cases, you are in rebellion because Yahweh says, I made the land, the land is mine. You are deceived, children. And if we are deceived, we will automatically go into a captivity. So, this Constitution is enormously important because if we all think the Constitution is the supreme law of the land, we're going to keep, if we keep doing what we've been doing, we're going to keep getting what we've been getting. And what we have been getting is a repeated butt kicking by Babylon and its enforcers. Simultaneously, like saying, oh, this government's wicked, but then doing, being too fearful and cowardly to actually do something against it. Well, Yahweh says otherwise, is glorify me, children. Be the light of the world. Be the salt of the earth. Learn your doctrine so that you can stand firm in your feet when people want to challenge you as to whether, you know, really simple stuff. Can man make any law? Or can only God make laws? That's a very, very uh, simple, simple concept. Does the Bible establish a theocracy or does the Bible establish a polytheism like the U.S. Constitution? Obviously, the Bible establishes a theocracy. However, 99% of Christians believe the lie. They believe that the U.S. Constitution is the supreme law of the land and that we have lawmakers that we elect. I'm trying to read that. It's hard to read there, Kathy. I, I can't read the comment. I don't want to take my eyes off the road. Um, I apologize. <sighs> so now is a very urgent time on planet Earth, <clears throat> regardless of the shape, because we've been in a captivity for a very, very long time, and the tyranny is getting greater and greater and greater, the oppression is getting greater and greater and greater. And seemingly, there's no way out of it. But there it goes. Yah comes with the good news. Yah who saves. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. 
and to proclaim the year of our Lord's favor. Yahweh owns all of the land and he wants to give it back to his people. That's why the law is so important. And it was important for me to tear down that uh, our father's idol in the form of the U.S. Constitution because both my, my mom and my dad took one. I took one myself. Um, and that oath, that oath is a bond with the devil. <laughs> Anytime that you believe in something that originates from the tree of life or originates from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, depending upon which tree it came from, uh, we will be enslaved. And we don't want to be enslaved, obviously. We want to be released from captivity. It's time for uh, a release. So, like the Bob Marley song goes, Exodus, movement of yes people, Exodus. So, that's the uh, video for today. Um, I hope I made a, a decent proof. There's some big names that are constitutionalists who are in error, such as Alex Jones, or Stuart Rhodes of Oath Keepers, or Pastor Chuck Baldwin. Um, for anybody that knows any of those guys, um, I'm glad and happy to immediately, immediately debate any one of them, but they won't because you can't. It's it's impossible. the The Bible will clearly uh, evidence that only Yah can make laws. It says only Yah is lawgiver. Everything is mine. Since it's mine, I can make the rules, and the people are supposed to follow. And uh, part of those rules is for us to love one another uh, as brothers and sisters. And uh, it says, you know, for um, what you do to the least of mine, you do to me. So if we are allowing children to be negl uh, neglected, uh, you know, think of third world nations and they don't even have water, you know what I mean? Just like Flint, Michigan. Um, the missionary work that has to occur is at home because the vast, vast majority of Christendom, at best, they're just going to keep on being able to do donations in order to, you know, help, help with uh, homelessness. What we want to do is we want to end homelessness entirely. We want to end the rebellion to Yahweh's laws. We want to end the uh, ability to, uh, by a, a tiny minority of moneylenders to engineer false flags like 9-11, like uh, the Gulf of Tonkin, like Pearl Harbor, because that's how they do it. They keep punking us and punking us and they're all they're doing is they're human farming, and the way you human farm is you divide and conquer and get everybody in their own little camps, and what we need to do is get everybody back. Uh, man, I, I'm trying to read some comments, and I just can't read them because the, uh, the light is uh, too, too much glare. Um... Almost gotten back. I'm going to Home Depot to load up lumber. Uh, we're going to be building it in and uh, putting walls on the uh, the School of the Prophets uh, assembly area. <laughs> so basically, I have a pole barn, and it's it's got only one side on it. So the rain all gets in there. I can't even leave a Bible under it because the rain gets in it and it gets everything wet on the inside. So we are going to put sides on it and the goal of this uh, structure is that we can invite people in and have their own anointing and have an authentic biblical uh, you know, meet Yahweh at the altar of incense experience at the Feast of Unleavened Bread at the Feast of uh, Pentecost, and finally at the Feast of Tents. And we're going to be doing this as part of an Exodus tour 
going back to Colorado. So, uh, Kathy Miller, I know you live out there and uh, you're invited. Uh, please come on out to uh, the Feast of Tents in Breckenridge, Colorado, October 6th, 7th, and 8th. It's a Friday through a Sunday in the first week of October, which aligns up with the Feast of Tents, and we're going to have uh, internationally famous speakers about debt forgiveness, uh, such as Henry Garman out of uh, Ecuador, and uh, Brett Jones has written a book called Modern, uh, I'm sorry, um, The Monetary System of the Most High is the title to Brett Jones's book about monet biblical monetary reform. And simply put, biblical monetary reform is similar to uh, like a local currency. It's just, it's just uh, the tithe is being brought to the Feast of Yahweh and rather than, if it's at a distance, rather than you bring the physical tithe, you bring an IOU. So if, it, if it's not practical to bring two donkeys as your tithe, rather than bringing the donkeys themselves, uh, you, bring, you can bring an IOU for the two donkeys. And those, that IOU gets stored up in the king's storehouse, uh, and, and when there's somebody who's homeless or uh, widows and orphans, the captains and judges of tens, fifties, hundreds, and a thousands, they have access to these uh, assets and then uh, turn them over to the people in need. That is the basis for the biblical uh, economic system. Real simple, and all debts are forgiven every seven years, there's no usury, and individual producers are the act, the, the individual producers are the uh, issuers of money. That's exactly what we did with Mountain Hours. Individual issuers are the source of money. They just create a bond to Yahweh for two goats or two donkeys. Just make a bond with Yahweh. Yahweh, I owe you because you've given me so much. So once we, we turn all of our allegiance to that God, the Creator God, and tithe only to that God and establish these local inde independent, self-sufficient uh, tribes, self-sufficient for food, etc., self-sufficient for water and energy, we have the technology today that we can do this all fairly easily. We just have to focus and actually do it. So that's all for today. Uh, tomorrow, I want to put in uh, the video basically, you know, we outnumber the bankers a billion to one. What's to stop us from having an exodus this year in, in 12 months? What is there stopping us other than us? You know? We outnumber the bad guys by so many. How is it? How is it that this tiny minority of parasites who are living wickedly are able to rule over us with so much, um, with so much impact, with so much? You know, it's diabolical. Like this is a very dark theocracy. They've really thought out every level. Um, but ultimately, it was just human beings that did this. It's possible for us to organize and plan and issue our own money and uh, hire our own enforcers and to establish a, uh, our own independent system from this Babylonian system uh, so that we can have our exodus. So I'm almost to the job side. I appreciate you guys listening. 
And uh, the, the, the step one, it's going to be a painful process because we got to tear down our father's idols uh, as demonstrated, as witnessed by Gideon, who in order to get the revival going that he promoted, the first step was to tear their father's idols down. And our one of our dominant idols is that the U.S. Constitution is holy when it, in fact it is profane. And... That's a big deal because man has no authority, zero authority to make any law. That's hard to believe, especially if you live in a city. <laughs> um, alternatively, imagine you're in nature and you, you, you know, you're playing God or trying to like the government and you're saying you're some government bureaucrat and you're saying to uh, some bird, and say, hey, from, from now on, every day you have to drop a penny into my, uh, my cup, bird. And the bird would just keep flying. The bird would never even stop for a, th a second to think what, that, what this guy is saying has any validity. It's, it's just vanity. Um, well, unfortunately, that's what Babylon has done to... Uh, nearly all of all of nearly all of the Christian denominations and the Hebrew roots movement it's all been deceived because th they don't ever talk about how we can have a revolution in less than a year and the reason being is because they don't have the Holy Spirit and they don't have the good news. And they're rejecting the prophets. They're not obeying all of the laws. Um, and the first law says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And, and tithing to Caesar is having another god before Yahweh. It's, if you're a bride and you're obeying Caesar instead of obeying Yah, that's whoring. He doesn't like it. Uh, so this is a tough one, this Constitution thing. The Bible is a book about a theocracy. And that's it for episode one. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about, um, you know, is it true that, that there's nothing we can do? Um, I listened to the uh, Declaring the End from the Beginning conference, and, and their solution was to just pray. <laughs> the problem is, is that if we're not keeping the law, even our prayers will be an abomination. So that means if we keep tithing to Caesar and we keep uh, paying the usurers and we keep being borrowers who are servants to money lenders, we will continue with the captivity by obeying man's laws. So we're looking to change that up and, and move on. Uh, to a brighter way and uh, I got to go load uh, some wood and thanks for listening